So now we're going to look at the likelihood based on NIID samples from a normal distribution. So N mu sigma squared. And we've already shown that that's distributed normally with a mean of the sample mean uh, variance of sigma squared over n. Now if we have a prior, recalling that the product of Gaussian or normal distributions is also a Gaussian or normal distribution, it's not a bad idea to have our prior also to be a normal distribution because then we're going to have a normal distribution times a normal distribution the result will be a normal distribution so we're going to say it's some mean and some variance the prior times the likelihood will be normal with some mean i'm denoting mu n and some variance I'm denoting sigma n squared. As we know, s squared and n and sigma squared, we can ignore the constant term. And this constant term is of the form of 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared to the power of n times 1 over the square root of 2 pi s squared. And it's, so it's of this type of form. proportional to that, they're all constants, we can ignore that. We have g of mu y1, that'd be over n there, to yn is proportional to the prior times the likelihood, given the data. So we say it's proportional to the exponential part because we're ignoring the constant bit of our mean uh, of our prior which is of the form with respect to m and mu so we're going to have minus 1 over 2 s squared mu minus m to b squared times the exponential of 1 minus and it's not no longer it's one over two sigma squared divided by n so it becomes on top times mu minus y bar to b squared. Well you can remove this bit here and just add them together and expand out the brackets is equal to the exponential of minus 1 over 2 s squared mu squared plus m squared minus 2 mu m minus n over 2 sigma squared mu squared plus y bar squared minus 2 mu y bar so we then progress on and we group the terms containing the similar powers of mu together so it's equal to the exponential of minus 1 over 2 and we'll keep that outside for convenience mu squared times well 1 over s squared, the minus has been dealt with, so plus n over sigma squared. Now we'll look at the terms containing mu 
to the power of 1. And they both have additional minuses. So minus 2 mu. And then we have m over s squared plus, because we have sufficient minuses to deal with everything, n y bar over sigma squared. And then we actually have plus stuff that doesn't depend on mu, so we don't actually have to be too concerned about it. But for completeness, we'll have it's m squared over s squared plus y bar squared over sigma squared. Now, we expect to see something of the form exponential minus 1 over 2 sigma squared n into mu squared plus mu n squared, which we we're going to be not too bothered about, mu, mu n. So we'll concentrate on matching the powers of mu squared, of mu, not of mu n, but only of mu. So we have minus 1 over 2 sigma squared n times mu is equal to minus 1 over 2 mu and sorry squared mu squared 1 over s squared plus n over sigma squared and you'll see here this implies that 1 over sigma squared is equal to 1 over s squared plus n over sigma squared. So this is the precision of your posterior is equal to the precision of your prior plus the precision of your likelihood. This should be n here. So we also note that 1 over sigma squared n can also be written in the form of sigma squared plus s squared n divided by sigma squared s squared, which implies that sigma squared n is equal to sigma squared s squared over sigma squared plus s squared n. So this will become clear later on as to why we bother to do this. So the next part is we've expected to see the next part we've expected to see is in terms of our y ends is we have minus two so minus by minus becomes a plus mu mu n over two sigma n squared is equal to mu mu n over sigma squared n and we want to compare it to our term with mu squared with with just mu in it and that's going to be equal to well the twos above and below the line cancel the minuses and the minuses become a plus so it's equal to mu times m divided by s squared plus n y bar over sigma squared cancelling your mu, so you get mu n divided by the variance of our posterior is equal to m sigma squared plus n y bar s squared divided by sigma squared s squared. Now, so mu n is equal, so the, that's the mean of our posterior is equal to sigma squared n times mu or m sigma squared plus n y bar s squared divided by sigma squared s squared which if we recall from earlier why did I bother to put it into this form 
So it's equal to sigma squared s squared over sigma squared plus s squared n times m sigma squared plus n y bar s squared divided by sigma squared s squared. And we get things that cancel quite nicely. So you get that the mean of the posterior is m sigma squared plus n y bar s squared over sigma squared plus s squared n. Now, for convenience, we actually tend to write this of the form sigma squared over sigma squared plus s squared n times m plus s squared over sigma squared plus s squared n n y bar. Remember, that's just your sum of your values. 